So, let me rewind uh, some of the discussion that we have already uh, done. Uh, we know that the Hall plateaus uh, are quantized and we have taken a 2D electron gas and have put a perpendicular magnetic field and uh, when you calculate the Hall conductivity, the conductivity is or the resistivity, um, either of them is found to be quantized at values that are um, integral multiples of uh, h over e square or e square over h. Uh, let us just talk about the conductivity for the moment. So, it is um, uh, integral multiple of uh, e square over h and uh, these um, integers are very robust. They do not go away with disorder um, and the system as I said does not possess a translational symmetry or a time reversal symmetry. Still these plateaus continue to exist. They are resilient to these um, external conditions that we have spoken about. Uh, this is of course a fact. We need to understand um, deeper that is why do they survive uh, even though uh, the symmetry protections are not there. And in fact, it is because the symmetry protections are not there, uh, the plateaus actually arise. And uh, some of the physical reasons we have seen that there are disorder that plays a role in um, broadening the Landau bands and as you know the Landau levels uh, move or uh, as the magnetic field is increased, uh, the Landau bands uh, kind of successively cross the Fermi level and uh, that is where um, they spend some time while crossing the Fermi level and, and one sees that there is a plateau that arises. Uh, now, uh, we have said that these quantization of the plateaus or in the Hall conductivity are related to a topological invariant, uh, but we have not elaborated it as yet. Uh, we are going to do that, but in order to understand that statement um, uh, quite uh, you know convincingly, what we do is that we change the system and we go to a system which uh, has translational invariance such as a crystal lattice and we want to see this in a crystal lattice what happens. Okay? Uh, suppose we put a simple lattice uh, such as you know a two dimensional square lattice in a magnetic field then what happens. Now, it is um, you cannot take a 1D lattice uh, for uh, you know discussing magnetic field because uh, we need to understand that there should be an area. Uh, for the flux to penetrate uh, in order to you know for that uh, magnetic field to have any uh, effect. Uh, a 1D lattice of course uh, does not enclose such an area and that is why uh, we have to go to 2D and the simplest of the 2D uh, lattice is a 2D square lattice, a uniform square lattice and that is what uh, let us see that. Uh, the uh, As I said the uh, idea is to uh, understand uh, the quantization of the Hall conductivity in terms of a topological invariant. Uh, this will yield sort of a mathematical way to arrive at that uh, topological invariant that we just talked about and uh, this will make the calculations more clear. Uh, and uh, otherwise in a 2D electron gas, um, a dirty system and with no translational invariance, uh, it is difficult uh, to or rather it is not possible to do a calculation. We just have to say that uh, the topological invariant is the coefficient that sits in front of the Hall conductivity. And remember Hall conductivity has been found uh, using Kubo formula, the formula that we have derived. Okay. Now, um, in order to talk about uh, these uh, uh, periodic potential, uh, let us understand the periodic potential. Uh, I have already shown that uh, an electron is actually moving in a, a periodic lattice. So, it experiences a potential which uh, is uh, periodic in nature that is uh, it is of the form V of R equal to V of R plus R. Let us write a vector on everything where R is the periodicity. So, capital R is the distance between two successive ions and they are offering a potential to the uh, to the electron that is you know uh, passing through it. And uh, we have drawn a 1D lattice, but of course, this can be done in any dimension. 
All right. The uh, solution of this problem that is if you want to solve this one particle problem in presence of a periodic potential, uh, this is called as um, chronic penny model solving the Schrodinger equation in presence of such a potential gives you the, uh, the energy uh, quantization for a, a, a you know a problem which is a, a continuum problem that is uh, uh, when the electrons have uh, a k square type dispersion a parabolic dispersion h cross square k square over 2 m. Uh, <coughs> but um, uh, in, in a lattice uh, the wave functions are given by uh, uh, a psi of r is uh, equal to u k of r and exponential i k dot r and uh, this is the wave function. Uh, so, this is a function of of course k and um, if you want to put a band index because there are multiple bands that are going to form and uh, so we can put a n here and we can put a n here where n denotes the band. Uh, so, it is the first band or a second band and so on. So, it is basically the band index and uh, these uh, u n k uh, of r it captures the periodicity of this uh, potential that we have talked about. So, k is actually a vector. So, you can write down it as a vector and uh, so this is like a r plus r and this goes by the name Bloch's theorem. But uh, this is only half the problem we need to also know about the energy eigenvalues for these uh, periodic potential and, and uh, we, can, we can know it uh, in a number of ways and one of the uh, things that are done in courses on solid state physics uh, or they are taught in that course uh, on solid state physics, basic solid state physics uh, where you learn tight binding approximation. Okay. So, tight binding approximation means that the electronic wave functions are tightly bound to the ionic core and it has very little overlap uh, with the neighboring ions, uh, but enough just to make the electron move from one position of one ionic core to the next. All right. So, uh, let me give you a very simple uh, derivation of uh, the this dispersion, the electronic dispersion and in this particular case we just talk about a square lattice. So, a square lattice is the simplest thing. So, we, we draw a square and uh, let us just uh, draw this and every uh, junction uh, of this vertical and the horizontal lines there is a lattice side that are present and um, so this is that lattice uh, say the lattice constant is A and uh, we are going to write down the tight binding dispersion uh, which is uh, epsilon as a function of k. Of course, this is a real space structure we are going to uh, derive the dispersion in the momentum space which is a function of k. And in order to do that uh, let me uh, sort of resort to technique uh, or uh, formalism which is like discretizing the Hamiltonian uh, into a grid which is uh, consisting of these lattice points. Okay. Uh, you can follow the derivation of uh, this tight binding uh, method for a general lattice say for example, uh, a three dimensional simple cubic lattice from Ashcroft. Okay. Let me show another uh, way of doing it. Uh, Let us say we have a function on a 1D grid. Okay. So, there is a function f of x uh, that resides on this grid and uh, this 1D grid is uh, I am just talking about a 1D function, but it can be generalized to more than one dimension. There are uh, these uh, sides which are like, so these, uh, these are, uh, there is no minus sign, there is just a dot dot and then it is x m minus 1, uh, x m uh, and x m plus 1 and so on. So, this is uh, uh, the greet points and this function is defined on those greet points. So, I, I can write it as x m where m is uh, any of the sides that you see written out here. Okay. So, uh, what we can do is that uh, since we are talking about a lattice your uh, x m and x m minus 1 or x m and x m plus 1 they are separated by a lattice constant a. What I mean by that is that uh, you can write down this as uh, you know. Uh, so, this is like a, a m minus 1 a um, m a and m plus 1 and so on. Okay. 
uh, this really uh, denote the coordinates in a one dimensional array. So, uh, what I want to do is that I uh, want to evaluate derivatives. And you may ask this question that why do we want to evaluate derivatives and the simple answer is that the second derivative which is d2f dx square in this particular case actually denotes the kinetic energy because your kinetic energy is written as minus h square h bar square over 2 m, m being uh, the particle mass, the mass of the particle that moves on this 1D lattice and uh, into d2 dx2. So, we want to discretize uh, a d2 dx2 on a lattice which gives you more you know intuitive uh, way of connecting uh, a continuum system uh, and uh, to that of a lattice. Okay. <clears throat> so, this you know from your um, elementary knowledge of derivatives. So, it is a df dx since we are talking about uh, 1D I can take the liberty of writing the full derivative otherwise it could be you know if uh, you are talking about a two dimensional system the, so then it will be like a del f del x and so on. So, this is equal to uh, f m plus 1 minus f of m uh, minus 1. Uh, so, we are taking the two point difference formula. Uh, we are not taking f m plus 1 and f m or f m minus 1 and f m, but we are taking uh, this site and this site and then dividing it by 2 a and this is the formula for the derivatives. I mean the first derivative so to say. Let me write down the second derivative. The second derivative which is d 2 f uh, d x 2 uh, of course, this is a m and this is written as f m plus 1 minus twice of f m this is uh, called as the uh, three point formula <coughs> and so on uh, and then uh, f m minus 1 divided by a square and uh, these uh, f's are the values of the function and a is of course, the lattice constant or the distance between two successive points. Okay. So, we want to calculate the matrix element of the operator uh, either these uh, d 2 f d x 2 or d f d x. Let me show for both uh, between two sites um, m and n. So, it is a m d d x of n m n actually uh, denote sites. So, this is like um, m plus 1 uh, n minus m minus 1 n. Okay. So, uh, where f of uh, m we are uh, using that f of x m. So, uh, this is the, uh, the first derivative or uh, this is uh, uh, the matrix elements of the operator d d x and uh, this is nothing but uh, using the uh, relations of uh, <coughs> the orthogonality relations. This is nothing but a delta n m plus 1 otherwise it will go to 0 if n is not equal to m plus 1 because these are kets. Uh, so, we are taking the basis to be the side basis m okay, and taking the uh, expectation value uh, of these uh, operator d d x and d 2 d x 2 in this basis which is given by this. So, let me write that this is the basis of the problem which is the side basis okay. minus delta n m minus 1 divided by 2 a. Okay. So, this is the d d x and uh, similarly we can do it for a, a double derivative which is d 2 d x 2 which is this and this is equal to um, again uh, we can write it down. So, del n m plus 1 you can check that minus delta n m uh, plus delta n m minus 1 and uh, s square. So, just to uh, tell you that delta n m this is called as a chronicler delta. Okay. Uh, so, what is meant by Kronecker delta that is uh, the definition is uh, so if this is equal to 1 for uh, m equal to n it is equal to 0 for m not equal to n that is when m and n become same then there is uh, 
a, it gives you a value 1 otherwise it gives you a value 0 ok. So, this is what it means and uh, where it comes from is uh, from the orthogonality relation like this which is delta m n. So, <coughs> these have matrix elements uh, uh, only between these uh, states which are given by. So, single derivative only has uh, matrix elements between the neighboring sides either the left neighbor which is this is m plus 1 is the right neighbor and m minus 1 is a left neighbor. And similarly, uh, this has um, the d 2 d x 2 has matrix elements in uh, between uh, these 3 states that is uh, uh, n equal to m, n equal to m plus 1, n equal to m minus 1. And you can understand that if I uh, want to uh, write down the double derivative uh, in 2 dimensions that is uh, if I want to write d x 2 plus a d 2 d y 2 and then I have to uh, introduce another variable say m n uh, for x direction. Uh, I mean m will uh, denote for uh, uh, this x direction the coordinates in the x direction and n will denote coordinates in the y direction and then you have to have m prime and n prime in order to take the um, <coughs> these matrix elements all right. Uh, let me write down a general operator uh, A uh, and which has a form which is like m n and uh, this is like m n uh, and uh, c m dagger c n ok. I am introducing this um, fermionic operators I mean this could be fermionic this could be bosonic uh, depending upon uh, what is the context of the problem. Uh, let us say we are talking about electrons because that is under our discussion now we are focusing on electronic transport. So, these are electronic operators and they have uh, you know the anti commutation relations between them. So, uh, which are given by a C m and a C n dagger this is equal to delta m n and so on. So, uh, this means that this anti commutation relation means that uh, there is a plus sign between the two that is C m C n dagger plus C n dagger C m. Uh, this is equal to delta n m uh, or m n uh, does not matter. This uh, tells you that that we are really talking about the second quantized operators uh, to describe the electron. So, this could be a Hamiltonian I have just written any operator it could be the Hamiltonian of the problem. So, if you use those definitions that we have just written above. So, then this is equal to 1 uh, 1 over 2 a which can come out of the integral and this is equal to like c m c m plus 1 and minus a uh, c m dagger. Uh, so, this is c m dagger c m plus 1 and this is a c m dagger c m minus 1 and so on ok. So, this is the uh, d d x operator and uh, similarly the d 2 d x 2 operator can be written in a similar fashion. Uh, which has a 1 over a square in the denominator and you have a a and then you have a c m dagger c m plus 1 uh, minus 2 c m dagger c m a uh, plus c m uh, dagger c m minus 1 and I am just following these uh, definitions that we have said. So, uh, these uh, we are discretizing the space. So, that from a continuum system we are going into a lattice. So, we are using this discretization scheme uh, in order to understand that how a kinetic energy which was written as simply as you know minus 8 square by 2 m and d 2 d x 2 how that can be written in a lattice. So, that is the idea behind this and we are sort of proceeding in that direction ok. Just like what we wrote. So, h equal to p square over 2 m and in 3 dimension uh, this is you know uh, it is equal to minus h square over 2 m and a d 2 d x 2 plus a d 2 d y 2 plus a d 2 d z 2 ok. That is the operator and if you have no potential that is the only term that is there. Of course, in presence of a periodic potential you will have a periodic term which is uh, v of r. So, right now we are not talking about this v of r we are uh, focus on this now all right ok. So, of course, here what uh, comes is that so you have this um, h cross square over 2 m um, and then 
we have this n and let me just write the only in one dimension. So, this this and then n because that will give me the energy that is the expectation value. So, I am taking it between the same states uh, and this will uh, give me equal to say a T n m which is a uh, T n m is the hopping amplitude. from site n to site m ok. So, that is uh, your T n m if this is equal to. So, you make a an approximation that this is equal to T if uh, n equal to m plus a delta uh, I mean a x cap where x cap is the unit vector in the x direction and uh, as I said that n and m are uh, just the site indices. So, if n happens to be m plus 1 unit that is uh, 1 lattice spacing uh, either in the plus direction or in the minus direction and so on. So, this is equal to a plus and minus uh, in, in 1D or it is this thing if otherwise. So, you make this approximation ok or uh, let us say this is the assumption and which is also uh, the called as the tight binding approximation. I remind you that I have said that uh, the approximation is uh, that the electronic wave functions are strongly bound to the sites and, and they have very little overlap with the neighboring sites, but just enough to give you a hopping uh, from or uh, a jump of the particle from one uh, site to its neighboring site ok. So, uh, this is uh, of course, uh, your T is equal to nothing but equal to in our language it is like uh, h over 2 m a square and so on. And um, now, in addition to this, if you consider uh, these um, C m and C n operators, we can uh, do a Fourier transform of this operators. It is just like the restatement of the blocks theorem for the operators. And in that case, your C m plus n uh, is equal to exponential i k dot n. And uh, let me write it in since I am writing it in one dimension, let us not uh, you know write. Uh, uh, with a vector sign uh, because it is a one dimensional problem. So, this is equal to C m uh, and if that is true then uh, of course, your epsilon k or the energy that comes from for this Hamiltonian. So, epsilon k is nothing but the, the energy uh, or the eigenvalue of this Hamiltonian that is written uh, in uh, equation 1, uh, but without the v of r there is no v of r there. Uh, and this is equal to uh, a minus 2t uh, including the minus sign now it is equal to cosine k x a plus a cosine k y a ok. Uh, in the sense that uh, we are only dealing with the kinetic energy term and uh, so uh, these uh, k x etcetera these are two dimensional. So, I have now written it in two dimension in a 2d square lattice in one dimension simply it gives you a minus 2 t cosine k x a. I just to go went one step ahead and uh, in a square lattice with a lattice constant a, uh, I write this as this is the energy dispersion. So, this is called as a tight binding energy dispersion. So, this was a missing link in the problem where you are talking about uh, the electrons present in a periodic potential. So, this is the, uh, the kinetic energy, this is how the kinetic energy uh, behaves. And if you look at it carefully, your uh, the long wavelength uh, limit of this dispersion uh, exactly uh, looks like um, the continuum problem. So, if you take a long wavelength limit, which means that your uh, k actually uh, can be written as uh, uh, 2 pi over lambda and uh, which means lambda is large. So, k goes to 0 uh, when lambda is large. So, that is the long wavelength ok. Uh, so, if k goes to 0 I can do a um, 
so k going to 0 limit of this is minus 2 t into 1 minus k x square over 2. Uh, this is the cosine function that that is how the cos behaves as you take the k x going to a 0 limit uh, k x uh, of course a square and a plus a, a 1 minus k y square by 2 a square and so on. So, this I uh, take away this. So, this is equal to 40 minus 40, uh, 40 because there is a 1 and 1 that will make 2. So, 2 and 2 40 and then there is a 2t um, and uh, a square and the kx square plus a ky square. Uh, if I drop this term neglect what I mean is that it is a constant term which can be neglected. So, this really looks like the k square dispersion which you are most familiar with it is a, a free particle dispersion in k space which is h cross square k square over 2m. Okay. So, the dispersion of electrons in two dimension uh, in a two dimension square lattice is uh, given as uh, this minus 2 t cosine k x a plus a cosine k y a. Now, of course, the system has translational invariance. We will come back to this figure you may be seeing this. Uh, this is one of the um, important discussions uh, that will have to be done and this is called as the Hofstadter butterfly, but I will come back to this. All right. So, uh, now of course, one of the uh, chief ingredients of our discussion is the magnetic field. So, we will let us you know do a square lattice in a magnetic field. Okay. And um, we write down uh, again the Hamiltonian. Uh, so, it is in a square lattice. So, so, we have the Hamiltonian, the tight binding Hamiltonian. Now, we are not writing m n, uh, m was written because it was a single this thing. Let me write it as uh, i and j which means the same thing. And when I use this symbol i j with uh, an angular bracket, it means that they are nearest neighbor. So, j is the nearest neighbor of i. So, this is equal to in principle uh, you can have T i j to be inside which means that it can be different the hopping amplitudes can be different for each of the links in a square lattice. I have already shown you a square lattice. Uh, so, this is a C uh, C j dagger uh, C i and now uh, a magnetic field has to be included and how do you include magnetic field? You have seen that. Um, in a continuum system it is included as E plus P plus E A. So, it enters through the momentum uh, of the particle. So, the magnetic field enters through the vector potential and the vector potential actually renormalizes the value of the momentum. Uh, it makes the, uh, the mechanical momentum to be the canonical momentum which is nothing but P plus E A, uh, but in a lattice it um, enters just like this that t the hopping amplitude it is a t into exponential sum i uh, and some phi, phi is some phase okay. and this phase contains the information about the magnetic field through the vector potential. So, this phi is nothing but uh, it is related to uh, the line integral of the uh, vector potential and if you use the uh, Stokes theorem. Uh, which says that the line integral of a vector potential is actually or rather any vector is uh, can be written as a curl of uh, the vector and uh, over this d s. Uh, now, this is of course, a closed integral and so this s is the surface of the closed contour that you have uh, considered. So, this curl is nothing but b. So, this becomes a b dot d s. So, this uh, phase that you see involves the flux that threads through the lattice. So, it, it the magnetic field has a flux which is given by the b into the area and that uh, whatever flux threads the uh, sample or the system is given by this, uh, this that appears in the phase. Okay. So, uh, there is a Hermitian conjugate that is very important we have not written it earlier, but uh, because of the Hermitian conjugate the uh, Hamiltonian becomes Hermitian and it gives real eigenvalues. Okay. If you do not have that then you have uh, problems. Okay. Now, 
in presence of the magnetic field uh, we do not have translational invariance and the reason that we lose translational invariance is because uh, the hopping now uh, becomes a function of i j that is uh, these sites because as the electron hops it picks up a phase and then it picks up another phase okay uh, I mean that phase keeps growing as you keep uh, as the electron or the, as the particle keeps hopping from one side to another. Then of course, the Hamiltonian which only comprises of the kinetic energy or the hopping term uh, then is not same from going from one side to another and if it is not same then uh, you cannot Fourier transform and write it uh, epsilon as a function of k. But luckily uh, there is uh, something else that happens we would be able to uh, formulate a magnetic Brillouin zone uh, or a magnetic unit cell. Uh, which of course uh, does not have uh, the periodicity, but uh, that unit cell is repeated which means that uh, what I am trying to say is the following. Exponential i phi is a phase right. So, phi is a phase which is just like a, an angle. Now, if the phi changes from phi to phi plus 2 pi, so if the angle changes to 2 pi then of course, the phase does not change at all because exponential i phi plus 2 pi is equal to same as exponential i phi because exponential 2 pi i equal to 1 which is cos 2 pi plus i sin 2 pi ok. So, because of this even if the electron hoppings are different, but it is only different over certain uh, dimension and we can take that as a unit cell. See previously the unit cell was just comprising of one atom uh, which we have uh, you know shown here. So, here I mean one uh, lattice point you can frame uh, a unit cell uh, there uh, and you can translate it everywhere in order to generate the lattice. If you have a bipartite lattice then of course, you can you have to have two uh, atoms per unit cell and so on ok. I, I am just doing a general discussion. Uh, but here uh, you uh, cannot generate the lattice because the Hamiltonian being it changes as you go from one side to another. So, uh, this picks up a phase which we let us write it as theta i j ok. So, as it goes from i to j it picks up a phase. So, there is a i here and the reason that I am writing it with a red, uh, red ink is because this is equal to so i in red is root over minus 1 whereas the i in black is not a, a other site indices ok. You, you do not have to you know carry on this uh, ambiguity for too long will uh, sort of uh, and if you if it bothers you please uh, help yourself to write with m and n ok uh, which is going to be fine all right. And uh, this phase factor uh, theta i j equal to minus of theta j i. So, basically it is uh, defined on a link or on a bond ok. So, uh, it uh, connecting a pair of sites i and j all right. So, what is then a theta i j? Theta i j equal to uh, 2 pi e over h and uh, from i to j now these are of course, sites and this vector potential dot d l ok. And uh, so, a is the vector potential. So, now what uh, it can be done is that this 1 over 2 pi this 2 pi if I take it uh, down and then I sum over all the theta i j's in uh, going from these. Uh, so, this as I go in one uh, this thing so I go like this then I go like this then I go like this and then I go like this. Why do I go in a, a particular uh, placket this is like called a placket. I go in a placket because in order to understand that what is the flux that uh, thread uh, 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 this is related to these hoppings would be related to the flux that threads that particular uh, this area uh, which is shaded 
like this ok. So, uh, in order to do that let us uh, let us uh, sum over all this uh, around an around a placket area let us write it like this and this is equal to nothing but E over H uh, and then integral I mean the closed integral A dot DL and uh, so this is H so E over H uh, you know H over E is uh, just to remind you this I have done several times uh, this is the uh, flux quantum let us call it a phi naught which uh, has a value which I have told also a, a number of times ok. So, this is equal to 1 over phi 0 because uh, E over H is inverse of H over E and then uh, there is a surface and then this is equal to B dot ds ok. So, as I just said that uh, these um, phases are related to uh, the flux. So, B dot ds is a flux that threads one uh, placket of that square lattice which I have shown and um, uh, phi 0 is of course, the flux quantum around this uh, placket. So, we know this. Um, so, this uh, is actually the phi. So, let, let me write this as phi over phi 0 and uh, that is equal to 1 over 2 pi and then sum over all this theta i j and so on. So, suppose this uh, phi that you have here this flux b dot d s. So, this phi uh, which is uh, let us call it as a 1 over 2 pi and then uh, this theta i j uh, over a placket I am just in shorthand I am just writing a placket that is around a placket. Uh, so, this becomes equal to or rather um, you know this phi over phi 0 uh, it becomes a fraction like this. So, P by Q is called as a rational fraction uh, when P and Q are co prime integers. And what I mean by co prime integers is that uh, basically they have no. Um, a common quotient that is uh, a one cannot be divided by the other such as say 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 3 by 5 and so on, uh, 3 by 7 and so on. So, there is no common factor and that is why they are called co prime and this is a rational fraction ok. So, if it is in this form because phi by phi 0 is a fraction and if this fraction happens to be a, a rational fraction in uh, that case then uh, the spectrum the spectrum that I have shown this is quite important splits into Q sub bands ok. And uh, so, basically uh, somebody called uh, D Hofstadter he uh, studied this problem for the first time and uh, that is why uh, these uh, quantization of the electronic dispersion which is minus 2 t cosine k x a plus cosine k y a which is which just uh, saw. Now, that further splits into uh, these uh, sub bands uh, and uh, it, it forms a fractal structure ok. I will show you the picture, but uh, you will have to uh, you know calculate uh, uh, work out that and calculate this uh, thing. And um, so, suppose now our job is to take a, a specific choice of magnetic field. That is easy because we have several times said that we want to take a B which is B z cap ok. And um, uh, um, then of course, uh, we have one of the choices which is a Landau gauge. So, let us write a Landau gauge. So, this is equal to uh, B x y cap ok or you can take B y x cap. Now, because of this let us see what happens. Let me uh, draw this uh, square lattice once again and uh, you will see that uh, 
just bear with me till I draw the lattice. These are the bonds along with which the electron hops or the, or the links, you can call them a links or bonds and so on and so forth. Well, I think this should be enough for our discussion. Okay, all right. So now what happens is that you see the uh, hopping in the x direction is uh, unchanged, okay, because the gauge is in the y direction. So the theta or the uh, the phase that the electron picks up will only be affecting the movement in the uh, or hopping along the y direction. So, the x direction still remains as t, t, t and t. Now, let me take for L equal to 1. Uh, so, these are different uh, rungs and different legs, legs and rungs. So, L stands for uh, leg and this is L minus 1th leg, this is L minus 2th leg, this is L uh, plus 1th leg and so on. So, this is uh, k equal to uh, minus 1 rung and uh, k equal to 0 rung and k equal to 1 and k equal to 2 and k equal to 3 and so on. Okay. Now, this hoppings are uh, like uh, t in the x direction, in all the x direction is t because the, uh, the gauge is particularly taken in the y direction because it is b x y cap. Okay. And because of that, these hoppings along these y directions, they will pick up a phase this directions it will pick up a phase and they will pick up a phase depending upon this phi by phi 0. Okay? In a particular case, let us take phi by phi 0 a rational fraction, a specific rational fraction one third which is simple. Okay? So, then what will happen to these uh, hopping? So, this hopping will be t into exponential 2 pi i by 3 t exponential 2 pi i by 3, uh, t exponential 2 pi i by 3 and so on. So, this will be at k equal to 0 will be still uh, t uh, of course, because uh, this is uh, we are talking about. Uh, so, this will be um, like uh, t uh, exponential 4 pi i by 3, t exponential 4 pi i by 3, uh, t exponential 4 pi i by 3 and so on and uh, similarly there will be a uh, t uh, exponential 4 pi i by 3 along these bonds. Okay? So, t exponential 4 pi i by 3 and t exponential 4 pi i by 3 and so on and all the horizontal hoppings are of course t. Okay. Now, you see uh, your uh, B is in the z direction that is uh, it is coming out from the board. Okay. So, you see the point dot of the arrow and uh, the uh, this thing is in the y direction of course, uh, and uh, but it is increasing in the x direction like this and so on. So, this is the A, uh, this is the x direction because it is uh, B into x uh, and it is increasing in the y direction. So, uh, this is not the direction, this is x because uh, as x increases, uh, b increases. Okay? So, we have particularly taken uh, the p by q equal to one third okay? and have uh, done this. Now, you see why I have uh, drawn it till this and not drawn in beyond this, that is not one more uh, sequence of uh, sites. And the reason is the following that you see uh, the next thing if suppose there is one here uh, and here and here, uh, let me uh, sort of show it by uh, some. The hopping would have been uh, 6 pi i by 3 in that along the y direction and 6 pi i by 3 is nothing but 2 pi i. So, that will be the same hopping that we have started with here okay? and, and uh, so on. Okay, I mean uh, just check that whether uh, everything has been written correctly, but uh, when uh, the hopping becomes 6 pi i by 3, it becomes equal to 2 pi i and which is same as t. So, we are able to identify a magnetic you know unit cell which I mean this is the magnetic unit cell for this choice of flux 
which uh, repeats. So, it starts with uh, ok, maybe I will um, sort of take this thing also because it starts with t in the vertical direction and then it sort of carries on. So, uh, it is t in the vertical direction is t 2 pi i by 3 and then it is t 2 4 pi i by 3. So, possibly we will just uh, remove this and, and check what they are uh, in this uh, particular. Uh, so, it is k equal to 1. So, it should have been minus 2 pi i by 3 and so on. Might have written it wrong, but check what they be. And so, this is the unit cell of this problem. And uh, now, even if the system has lost translational invariance because of the presence of the magnetic field, uh, we still are able to uh, calculate or rather take a unit cell and diagonalize that Hamiltonian. Okay? And uh, one such exercise one can do uh, in which I have taken a slightly different uh, unit cell that is I have taken p by q equal to 4 uh, that is 1 over 4. So, I uh, have written down a Hamiltonian which is um, so this there is a minus 2 t cosine of uh, say b a plus k y a and uh, so this is including all of that. So, t exponential i k x a 0 t minus i uh, t k x a and uh, there is a t e to the power minus i k x a then uh, there is a minus 2 t uh, cosine this is all minus signs cosine uh, b a plus uh, 2 b a rather k y a and um, minus t uh, exponential i k x a and a 0 and a 0 here. So, uh, let me show you a specific example uh, where we uh, deviate from the earlier example and uh, take another fraction, another rational fraction for this phi over phi 0 which is of the form p by q and let me take it as 1 over 4 which is uh, uh, another uh, rational fraction that we talk about. Uh, now, uh, that of course, uh, the uh, unit cell, the magnetic unit cell will com comprise of uh, 4 uh, uh, terms or rather 4 lattice sites and hence we can write down a 4 by 4 matrix. So, the, uh, the matrix uh, one can check that the matrix looks like this uh, and um, it is a 4 by 4 because there are terms which are on site terms and then there are terms which are across the sites and so on. So, these are terms and then uh, when you uh, solve this uh, one gets uh, 4 eigenvalues and let us write down the 4 eigenvalues let us write them as. Um, so, it is minus 2 t cosine k x a plus 2 t cosine k y a lambda 2 equal to 2 t cosine k x a plus uh, 2 t cosine k y a. So, this is k y a and lambda 3 equal to uh, 2 t cosine k x a uh, minus 2 t sine k y a and lambda 4 equal to 2 t cosine k x a plus 2 t sine k y a and so on. Okay? These are the 4 eigenvalues which you can solve using either Mathematica or MATLAB or Python and once uh, when you do this uh, and plot the energy. So, these are the energies of these magnetic unit cell and when you do that for a large number of uh, values of the magnetic field. Uh, you get a spectrum which looks like this. This is called as the Hofstadter butterfly. Uh, 
this is actually fractal in nature because there is a self similar structure. So, if you read on fractals basically a small part of that a small part of that uh, looks like uh, the whole picture that you see here. So, whether you see it here or you see it here everywhere there is a structures a self repeating and this is called as a fractal ok. And uh, these fractal structures or these uh, in the energy as a function of phi by phi 0, there is the same phi by phi 0 that we have uh, talked about. So, these for different values of the flux, so we have shown for one value of phi by phi 0 all these results. If you do it as a function of phi over phi 0, then uh, the E uh, in terms of this T, T is uh, or T naught is the, the scale of the problem and one sees a fractal nature. And uh, so, our job is not to really uh, dwell on the Hofstadter butterfly, but this is one of the things that arise for these energy spectrum in presence of a, a magnetic field, where uh, the tide binding dispersion itself splits up each of the bands split up. Uh, if there are multiple bands for a given problem, they split up into these self similar structures uh, a, as a function of phi over phi 0 or p by q. You see all those uh, fractions were taken. It is another piece of information that uh, the quantization of the Hall conductivity can be captured uh, from these uh, gaps in the spectrum uh, through a formula called as a Streda formula will not worry uh, too much about that because we have other ways of uh, uh, calculating uh, the, the Hall conductivity and so on. So, we will leave that uh, and um, uh, carry on uh, the discussion, uh, we will not do a sort of completely elaborate study of uh, the spectrum uh, in case of graphene, uh, but we want to see how uh, the situation evolves when you have graphene. Uh, so, we will talk about graphene and graphene in magnetic fields. Mm -hmm.